Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. 2018 Fireballs here, back with another MLB 9 Innings 22 video. In today's video, we're going to be continuing the series on things that you need to know before playing MLB 9 Innings. Now, in the last video, I presented you guys five things that you need to know before playing the game. And the same in this video, I'll be presenting five different things that you need to know before playing MLB 9 Innings. So if you guys do enjoy this series and you want to see more, uh, don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, in these videos, I present different things that could better your playing of this game and make your team better as well as improve your skills, trainings, and a bunch of other things. But without further ado, let's get straight into five more things that you need to know before playing MLB 9 innings. So the first thing and probably the most important thing that every player should know before playing MLB 9 innings is to never, ever, ever use a grade increase ticket on a card that is silver grade or lower. So we'll use the grade increase ticket on him now. I actually got this from another video on YouTube, I can't recall from who, but when you grade increase your card first before, uh oh, no, no. Guys, I goofed. I'm an idiot. Oh man. Now, in the video that you guys just watched, you saw me using a grade increase ticket on a silver signature card. Now, the reason you don't want to do that is because, as you saw in the video, my card did not go to a diamond. Even though it's a diamond grade increase ticket, there is no guarantee that a silver card, a bronze card, or a normal card will go to diamond. There is a chance that it will go to diamond, and I know of a person that got lucky, he made the same mistake I did and it went to diamond, but you're better off not taking that risk. So instead, what's better to do is to always use the grade increase ticket on a gold card. When you use it on a gold card, it will automatically guarantee that card to become diamond when you use the grade increase ticket. And another thing just to mention, even if you want to try and use a grade increase ticket on a normal card, bronze, or silver card, don't do it. Your chances of getting another grade increase ticket are next to none unless you want to spend a lot of money. The only ways you can get grade increase tickets are through the Pick'em event, which uh, your chances of getting 15 games picked in a row are next to none. Uh, you have to get really lucky. And another way you can get a grade increase ticket is by the off-season event. That guarantees a grade increase ticket, but it only comes around once a year. And if you're going to get a grade increase ticket, the last ways you can get them are by spending money in this game. And they only go for around $50 to $100. And I'm being sarcastic, but you really don't want to be spending that much money or wasting that much money on grade increase tickets. So to sum it all up, you're much better off just using the grade increase ticket on a gold card. I'm begging of you, please never use a grade increase ticket on a silver, bronze, or normal. You will regret it. You will make the same mistake I did. Thankfully, I got a free grade increase ticket the next month because Com to us ended up messing up. Uh, but yeah, you really don't want to take your chances using a grade increase ticket on a card that is less than a gold grade. The second thing that every player should know before playing MLB 9 innings, uh, this one is more of a question I get asked often, and it's, how do I get so many packs and what is the best way to get packs? And the answer to that question is by playing League Mode. Now in League Mode you get 15 balls to play uh, and they refresh every about 25 minutes or so, 30 minutes. And you can either quick play or you can auto play. Uh, right now I'm going to just quick play a game. But in League Mode you have the best chance of getting packs, that's the really, it's the only answer to that question. You can get packs through buying them in the rank shop, clutch hits uh, shop, as well as the club store and other places uh, as well as the normal store, but the best way to get and farm packs uh, without having to spend any coins or really do anything, just let the game play by itself, uh, is by playing league mode. Now in a minute here, once this game finishes, I will show you guys all the rewards and the packs that you can get from league mode, 
but definitely definitely league mode is by far the best way to get packs uh, you can get diamond packs ultimate player packs and depending on what year you're in uh, in league mode it depends on the rewards you get if you guys didn't know this you can go once you finish a game it'll show this screen and you can click, click on next go to reward info and you can see the different types of packs and rewards you can get from league mode so right now I reset my game to 2022 so right now you can see I can only get basic player packs intermediate packs live basics and live intermediates but as you guys scroll down and you can look at this for yourselves you can get different rewards as you unlock different years so 2023 uh, you don't get any new packs but you do get league reset tickets and challenge boosters in 2024 you get live season premium player packs and normal premiums and it goes on and on and on and once you get to the year 2035 you can get diamond packs now this doesn't mean that once you hit 2035 diamond packs are going to be dropping like crazy it just means that you have a chance of getting them i'm not sure what the odds are on you getting diamond packs or other higher packs but i do know that as you uh, progress onward in league mode you will end up getting better rewards and better packs so with all that said league mode is the best way to get packs league mode is the only way to get a lot of rewards without having to spend coins and stars so i would suggest playing league mode the most out of all the other modes in this game the next thing that every player should know before playing mlb nine innings and this is concerning training is to train pitchers for low stamina and to train batters for low speed and low fielding now i'm going to take my rick porcello here as an example for pitchers as you can see under his development he has 17 location 16 velocity 4 to stamina, 8 to fastball, and 12 to break. When you train pitchers for low stamina, the goal is to get as many points as you can to velocity and location while also getting enough points to fastball and break to upgrade the tier of the pitches that he has. Making them all S tier is the ultimate goal. Now, when you train pitchers, it's very difficult to get a low stamina train. And what constitutes a low stamina train across the board, I think most people agree that six stamina or less through level 20 is the ideal. Now I have gotten pretty lucky here and it's taken me quite a few level reset tickets to get this train. But what's important to note is you want to train your pitchers, especially end game pitchers, for less than six stamina. And the more velocity you get and the more location you get, the better your pitcher is because he will allow less home runs, less walks, and less hits. And if he doesn't allow home runs, walks, or hits, then the other team can't score. For batters, I'm going to take my Rafael Devers here as an example. For batters, you're going to want to train for low speed and low fielding. As you can see here, I've trained Devers to tw with 12 to contact, 22 to power, 12 to eye, 2 to speed, and 9 to fielding. What constitutes a low speed and fielding train is 14 or less to the right side. And that's the term everybody that plays the game will technically use. So right now, if you look at the train, I have only 11 to the right side, 9 fielding plus 2 speed. And with batters, uh, the ideal goal is to get as much power as you can while training for high eye and high contact. And this will improve the batter's performance. He'll hit more home runs, hit for higher average, get on base more, and ultimately score more runs. So, and the reason you don't train for any speed and fielding, it's the speed and fielding don't uh, take much part into determining the outcomes of games. Unless you have the barrel at up skill, uh, which I do on this Devers, you're going to want to get pretty high speed. But he's a signature card, so he already has high speed, and that's a whole nother story. But main thing to note is, for pitchers, train for low stamina, and for batters, train for low speed and low fielding. The next thing that every player should know before playing MLB 9 innings is regarding skills for both pitchers and batters. For pitchers, the five most important skills that you want to look for on any diamond pitcher are the finesse pitcher skill, Dominant Pitcher Skill, Untouchable, The Last Boss, and Cleaning Up Your Mess. Now all five of these skills, and it's agreed upon by the majority of the Nine Innings community, that all of these skills are 
in-game skills. They will perform well in almost any situation. They will give the pitcher that you have in a low earned run average, a low whip, and low stats against batters across the board. The only exception being cleaning up your mess. And the exception for cleaning up your mess is having it on a relief pitcher. And the reason you don't want to have cleaning up your, uh, your mess on a relief pitcher is because the skill uh, comes with the preconceived notion that there are runners on base. And with relief pitchers, because they have low stamina already uh, for their base stats, you don't want to be allowing runners on base with them. So cleaning up your mess is best used on starters, but that is the only exception. For batters, on the other hand, you're going to want to look for the charisma skill, batting machine, slugger instinct, barrel it up, and spotlight skills. And same thing with these skills, much of the community agrees that these five skills are by far the top tier skills in the game. They will give batters a higher batting average, more home runs, more runs scored, and ultimately better performance across the board to improve the whole team. The last thing that every player should know before playing MLB 9 innings, and this is directed more towards people who want to spend money on the game. If you don't want to spend money on the game, that's your choice. Uh, me personally, I don't spend that much money on the game, but when I do, I want to spend it on the item that guarantees the most improvement to my team, and that item is the Team Select Signature Pack Bundle and the Great Increase Ticket Bundle that appears every, every four months, every single year. So this bundle that I'm talking about looks something like this. I unfortunately don't have a screenshot that I can show you guys, but it is similar to this layout right here. On the right side, you will see a Team Select Signature Pack that will go for $99.99. In the middle, there will be a Grade Increase Ticket with a few other items that will go for $49.99. And on the left, there will be another special package that will come with something like a Diamond Player Selective Pack with a few skill changes and level reset tickets. Anyway, the reason that these items are the best items, Team Select Signature Pack and the Grade Increase Ticket, to buy every four months or so is because for mid-tier players or even beginner players this will help you improve your team the most as you start out uh, to get team signature cards is very hard by normal signature player packs and the only reason that I have plenty of signature player packs right now is because I've been saving for a while so your best shot at getting a team signature card is purchasing the team select signature pack and it's all up to you guys if you want to spend your money or not, if you have the money or not. Um, thankfully, I've been blessed and I've been able to purchase these things for quite a while now. But if you are considering spending money and you want to know what can I buy that will best improve my team, I would highly suggest to purchase the Great Increase Ticket for $50 and the Team Select Signature Pack Bundle for $100 every four months. So yeah, with that being said, let's head into the outro all right guys that's going to do it for today's video thank you so much for watching if you found this video to be helpful please consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to the channel if you have any questions about the game uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below and i'll be happy to answer you and help you to the best of my ability uh, go ahead and check the description box down below for other mlb 9 innings youtubers jfish ak's gaming ben r svineson uh, Jad, all these other great guys that make MLB 9 innings content. Uh, go ahead and show them some, some support and their videos are great so I know you guys would enjoy some of their content as well. But with all that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your guys day and I will see you all in the next video.